So this is Chris from Outdoor Crispy, and I built a climbing wall as you can see on the side of my house here. And after I posted some pictures and stuff on Facebook, so a lot of people really liked it, and so they were asking questions about it, wondering how I did it. And so, uh, even though it's already built, I recently added these three climbing holds here, the larger ones. And the, the green ones I got in a kit from Camp Trails. This is a beginner kit that covered enough uh, holds here to build the wall. Uh, I'll explain more about that another time. But as, as I am adding these other holds, I got a couple more that I have to add up to the top there. And I figured, heck, while I was doing this, I might as well do a video so everybody can see how I did it. So I guess to start out with, this, uh, it's, it's sitting on plywood, obviously. The plywood is three quarter inch thick plywood. Got it from uh, Home Depot. And I think it was uh, like 30 bucks a sheet, maybe 40 bucks a sheet. Uh, so uh, I'll go in more detail about this, I guess, another time. But there's a pattern that you can use to drill the holes to climbing on uh, for putting these uh, holds on. They're behind each of the holes. There's, there's a T-nut. The T-nuts, uh, most of them, for your holds, they actually come in the kits. And the bolts to put them on, they come in the kits too when you, when you buy these sets for holds. Uh, most of the times when you're buying the holds, they'll come with the bolt. And like I said, with this first set, with the grains when I got them, they had peanuts behind them and so i put those on the reverse side the gray paint that you see there's a couple coats of interior exterior paint that i got from home depot they were actually just a couple gallons of stuff that people had already got brought back didn't like it so i got it for like three bucks per gallon so we painted this up to coat it for the outside it's, it's held up pretty good it went through a good winter here in utah held it pretty good as far as what these are attached to i've got some treated redwood two by two or two by fours behind here uh, i'll show when i pull down the top one i'll to put some more t-nets behind they, they came with enough t-nets to put the holds on but I'll, anywhere that i've got a hole here that doesn't have a hold on it already there's no t-nut behind that and so i got another kit with a bunch of t-nuts and i'm going to be adding those so when i pull the top down I'll show you what it looks like behind. But basically what I did is with siding on houses, you can pretty much get underneath there with your fingers and pull it and it's kind of just hooked on. You can pull it out. And the reason I did that was to find out what the studs. Typically studs are set up on 16 inches on center. So, but when, when, they're, when they're building a house, I used to do some construction. When they're building a house, uh, when they're putting the plywood up or the particle board up behind the siding, they mark where the two by fours are gonna be, where your studs are, and usually use a chalk line behind that. And so as I pulled the, the siding up, I, I just pulled, usually they're coming together combined in sets of two strips there. And so when I pulled it out, I got underneath there with a the flashlight and I could see the chalk lines where the stud were, and so I took a just a test screw and drilled it in there to make sure I was hitting into a stud to confirm that that's where the studs were. So I, I did that and I've got some cross beams. I'll pull this thing off here, pull the my uh, GoPro off here so you can see. So on here you can see where I've got the, the main riser studs here and then behind here you can see a treated two by four that has been attached to the house i figured out the length of that just adding up the the width of the two by four there going through the particle board and into the stud usually at least as far as the thickness of the stud there so it's it's in there pretty good got these brackets here they're actually l brackets got those from home depot and i smashed them flat and that's what holds it on that side on the other side i have the l bracket so it's attached both to the stud as well as to this here so i've got that running all the way up you can see a couple others up there some of those are truss mounts that i've attached so i can attach to the end of the two by fours going up so you can see some of the details there this bottom piece you can see down here this is a this is a two by four lost my mic there this is a two by four that is uh, cut in half a treated one so it's now a two by two I, I attached that with some pretty good screws into the main truss so basically the thing that helps with that is that when i'm doing maintenance on the wall i could basically unscrew the screws that are on these three main two by fours here that are holding the main thing up when i take those out the whole thing just kind of comes down and lays fat and i can set it on like a saw horse or something like that that way i can work from the front or the back and then it just goes right back up put those screws right back in holds really really solid 
these screws here they're going about halfway into the two by four so they're holding on pretty solid i've got them got every foot in there and these are four by eight sheets so that's how i have here the, the string you might see here some cord i've got there i've got it really high because i didn't want kids just coming up here and climbing on it's a top roping wall and so i needed to be able to put something on there to when we're top roping i can attach my climbing rope to this rope here and i can just pull it out it pulls it up over the, the pipe that's up there and we're set to go so that's kind of how i have the basic setup here i have a gravel base on the ground to absorb the moisture i also have some right here some blocks here and over here to keep it up off the ground so they're not sucking moisture up it's still gonna little, get a little bit wet but honestly after the winters that we've had here and stuff like that it's been it's been holding up pretty good and so that's where we're at right now with things like i said i put these holds on recently didn't have my camera yet to be able to do this recording but I uh, wanted to get this kind of set up so far so you can see what I was doing and then like I said when I'm pulling the top down to put the rest of the all the rest of the holes I've got extra T-nets I got a bag of like a hundred of them off Amazon and so when I get that thing down to be able to put the holes in the back the T-nets in the back then I'll pop this all out again and show you the rest of the video and I'll show you the two the, the trusses and things like that the, the setup that's behind the wall supporting all this the pipe that i have up on top try to scan this the gopro here up a little bit so, so that can be seen more hopefully you can see that i got a pipe up on top there i'll show you the setup for that another time when i'm doing the rest of this video that pipe's rated pretty strong i think it was like for a 10 foot pole it was rated for about 1100 pounds and I've got this down to four feet and talked to some engineers and with the lengths that I got it, where the, where the rope's going to be, it, it's rated now for probably like around 2,500 to 3,000 pounds. Um, so it's pretty strong up there, pretty sturdy for being able to catch anybody. I've had some pretty good sized people climbing the wall before. Now, obviously with the top rope, the way we're doing it, keeping the rope pretty taut as people are climbing, people aren't doing a lot of free falling for very far. Usually with the top roping like that when if someone slips or something like that they're not falling very far so you, you don't have much elongation on the rope or anything like that so the weight is we're we're probably in the neighborhood of uh, about 2,000 pounds rated higher than the heaviest we're going to run into here on if we have any slips so that's what i have so far i'll let you know more about later if you're building a wall like this i'm just putting this out there to help people give them an idea what i did because they like i said they thought it was pretty cool so just wanted to make it available to people if you were going to build a wall or just know you know you, you got to do some figuring out with your studs and everything in the layout if you're going to do it on an angle there's a lot of other things you got you got to factor in as opposed to a wall that's straight up and so try this at your own risk uh, don't sue me if anything goes wrong uh, but uh, anyway just thought this would be a cool thing to put out there to help people out so thanks hello outdoors with chris b here again and i'm back to my climbing wall here showing you how to how I put it together and they're gonna go through a couple steps as you can see here I've got the top part of the wall down as I mentioned in the previous video and what I'm going to be doing now is going through and showing you um, how I got this down what the setup is because you can you're gonna be able to see into the um, behind the wall itself how the framing and everything is set up how that's organized and then I'm gonna go through and do a little bit of cleanup on the wall on the bolts that I do have to hold the the holds on right now they are not stainless steel they are regular steel and so with that in the winter one of the best things to do to to, to treat and prevent rust on that is uh, put some like wd-4 on but don't spray it all over the place because you get it all over your holds i just use a little bit of q-tips a little bit of paper towel but you know it's best to treat it before you put them on the wall but if you do that then it's going to give it some protection uh, if you don't have uh, wd-4 is an easy thing but also if that doesn't work as well uh, if you've got some Vaseline handy, that'll probably work. Just put a little bit of um, weatherproofing on it. So I'm going to be taking the ones that I have off right now as part of this process I'm doing now anyway. And I'll be retreating the bolts for that. And then I'll be treating the new bolts that I'm putting on with the new holds as well as putting the, the T-nuts in the back. And I'll show you pieces of all that. <clears throat> we break down, I guess, first and I'll show you how the, how the frame is set up on the wall. How we have that up there how i take it up and down for this top on the the bottom is a lot easier it just kind of comes down as i mentioned last time the top piece a little bit trickier got a couple ladders here some ladders behind the wall here and i just kind of had to 
some people helped me hold it there as I did the, unscrewed it, climbed up the ladder, we, and then I've got a rope actually, it goes through one of the holes that I have for the holds, but I don't use it for the holds. It's up in the top corner. It's it's just the top left bolt hole that I have up there. I hook the rope into that, hook it over the side of the frame, and then I'm able to raise it and lower it with the help of people, you know, just steadying it as it comes up or down to get it up in line so that I can, again, line it up and reattach it. So first thing I'm gonna go up over next, I guess, is I'll push pause here for just a second, and I'll take you up to show you the braces, give you a close up of that stuff. So you can see what's going on with that and then we'll go from there. Okay, so here you can see this is the close-up of this top hold that I have here. And this is part of the pattern that I have for the drill holes for the holds. I'm using this top one here. Just got a rope looped there through there and I loop it up through the side of the frame here. As it kind of shows there, I'll take it up there with the ladder and everything and show you a close-up. But I loop it up through there and that helps to hold it up. Okay, so here we are up at the top of the, the climbing wall here. You can see how I've got the stud bolted across here where the bolts are there with the wood that goes straight through the siding and really only makes maybe an eighth of an inch hole through the siding and that could be filled in pretty easy with some same color caulking. You know, usually with siding is kind of a white color or yellow or you can usually find some kind of a caulking to fit that. You can see the type of brace that I have there that I'm screwed in both to the to the frame that's on the house as well as these vertical frames that come up and down here you can see that I brought the rope up from the wall here and what it does is it just kind of comes up loops up over there comes up over the top here and back down and so as I'm pulling on this rope here and I got a friend here that just pushes from the bottom and to help lift the wall up into place and then we just attach the screws in there. So it's a little hard to use the phone app when I'm going up and down the ladder here. But anyway, it's so coming down here. This is the middle area. Uh, I showed you this a little bit before, but uh, with this area here, again, I've got some the the poster bolted in. I uh, actually this one here is bolted in as well underneath, so you can see the bolts here that are into the go into the house to support that and then again these braces here on the top for each of those to hold this other one it's pretty solid in there as i said and then the wall here is just attached with screws in there so anyway so that's kind of how i have that stuff set up if you have any questions you can feel free to ask me there i'm trying to show things the best you can so to kind of reduce the number of questions because once I get this back up it might be hard to explain that. And then I got these these same braces that are here. These same braces are on the bottom supporting these boards vertically as well. So I got those on the top and the bottom. It's, it's holding pretty good there. So got a good strength uh, weight ratio there. So there's a close up of some of that stuff that we've got showing that. So I'm going to get down from here now and I'm going to work on those holds so that we can get things ready to put it back up. Okay, here we go now. I've got my uh, drill bit here. It's a 5 16 inch bit with the uh, hex is a 5 16 So I'm just going to use that really quick Again, take off all these holds. We're going to clean up the bolts a little bit from the rest and treat them so that they, the weather doesn't get to them as bad. And then after I do that, then we'll, I'll show another clip. I'll flip it over, show you the T-nuts, how we're putting those in, and go from there. Okay, so now we got the wall down and it is, you know, obviously face down that top part here. So here, here's the T-nuts. They're just these things here. If I can get a close up here. Yeah. So these things, you can see a couple of them, one of them in right there. Basically, you just find the hole. You are, you'll put them in place there. We'll tap them in with the hammer. And you got these, these point things here on the, on the, on there that go in again these are I believe these are 5 sixteenths this is the extra what's left of the hundred pack that I got before off of Amazon and all the ones that are already in here are the ones that came with the holds already with all the rest of the holes that are not filled now we're going to be putting T-nuts these I believe are uh, zinc they again I treat them treated the bolts with WD-40 to help those keep going and to be a little bit more weatherproof so I am going to be putting the rest of those T-nuts in there and we'll get to that point and then put the other holds on for the front 
and go from there. So I'll be back in just a minute. So back again and went through and put the T-bolts or the T-nuts behind in all the spots. Now one, I guess, key takeaway is, is all the spots except for where the rope goes, that area there does not have a T-nut so that I can uh, continue to use that. Otherwise it'll be difficult to get it up and down. And every time you take the, every time you put the rope through or, or mess around with that, it's probably, it may push the T-nut through the back. So these are sitting here. And then of course the bolts come through the front and kind of clamp together and pull the T-nuts in there. So got one in every spot now so I can rearrange the holds wherever I'd like. And then I guess one last thing I'm gonna be doing here is I'm just gonna be spraying just a little bit through the back end there and that's gonna treat the inside and keep that protected as well so I'm going to go through and do that all then we'll flip it around rearrange the holds a little bit so I can put the newer bigger holds on there and we'll go from there okay so now I'm going to show you getting the wall back up and the braces that hold the crossbar on the top the pipe for top roping and so what we're doing here is I'm going to show you the setup that I've got for holding each side so I've got a bracket here I got again from Home Depot it's usually used for it's again it's a framing kind of thing it's it's designed for holding some pretty strong stuff in construction and whatnot I've got these bolts here that go through they're pretty long lag screws there and they're going through the plywood and in uh, deep into the 2x4 almost the whole width of the 2x4 there so that's pretty good strength there I've got three of them that all screw in there Excuse me, this goes in the side one there. So three of them that go through there to hold that up. And then you've got this piece up here. This is actually, or this pipe holder here, this is actually for fencing, for putting up fences like around your yard, whatnot. So I've got that bolted through the top there, and that comes down and clamps around the pipe that goes across the top. And so that's kind of what secures it there. Now, I was a little concerned about the strength of when we're getting around, um, up around, like if someone has a, a bit of a free fall on this thing, shouldn't fall very far, but if they have a free fall and the initial impact when they come down, stretching out the rope a little bit there, the climbing rope, there's a significant increase in weight that occurs. And I was concerned about this piece here just being able to support all that weight. And so what I've done with that to reinforce that is I've got some cut redwood treated lumber here that fits right in there like that and then what I'm doing is I'm bolting that on so I'm going to come in from this side here this piece here the screw just fits right straight down through there you got a washer and a nut that comes on there and so I've got two of those the other one's going to go through this other hole here obviously I did pre-drill these out a little bit bigger than than what came on the product originally but uh, so I'm bolting those on there that's what's going to give the the reinforcing strength here to the whole thing if you can adjust this a little bit more so you can see that that's what's given the strength to the whole thing to reinforce and back that up so that this will not collapse so basically that all goes up in there into the setup like that if i can get a good angle there for you sorry so that all goes up in there holds the crossbar across and that adds just adds a lot of strength that's that's not going to collapse down on, on on the pipe if there's a free fall or anything like that so it goes in really strong and uh, haven't had any problems i've had a couple you know people slip or something like that don't slip very far but this is really strong way exceeds the weight rating of the people involved and in what we're doing here and so very safe everybody's with the top roping you got harnesses and everything and you're roped in and so this is very strong to exceed whatever we're going to run into so very safe so that's what it is there i'll show you a little bit more as i get this thing um, as I get this piece up more into place I'm up on the wall and so we'll check back again when you get to that point. Thanks. Okay so at this point we are all finished. We got the wall back up. All the new holds are on now and so this is what it's looking like and I'll take you up to the top here and show you how the pipe up there is to give you a close-up of that. Okay here we are at the top. We can see the rope hanging down here. I use that rope. There's the other side there, but that's the pipe that holds things. And at this point, that's about the best shot we got here for you. But this rope hanging down here, that is a rope that I have a loop in the bottom and is used for 
basically with the loop on the bottom I take that and I attach the climbing rope to it so here's this rope that I have attached to the pipe you can see a couple I've got a loop attached here in the end and what I do with that is in this loop here at the bottom just with a loose knot I tie in the climbing rope to that and then I'm able to take that and pull it up just like a kind of like a flag pole rope where you hook the flag in and you take it up so that will take it up over the top of the pipe brings it back down and that's how I string up the the top roping rope and then of course the the lead person is harnessed in as well as the person climbing and they climb up usually hit the top there towards the kids people want to put a bell at the top to go up and ding that but anyway they go up there to the top and uh, then we just repel them back down so anyway that's that's how we're doing it so any questions feel free to ask thanks